ChatGPT5 vs Claude compete against each other to see which one makes the better puzzle game. Previously, we compared ChatGPT and DeepSeek and let's just say DeepSeek got absolutely smacked. But with Claude possibly being the best AI assistant for programming, ChatGPT might have a hard time keeping up. We'll judge each AI's game in terms of concept and innovativeness, if that's even a word. Programming and code flexibility, and most importantly, implementation and game design. And we'll judge the AI's based on how many prompts it took to get the optimal results. I started off with a pair of fresh accounts for both ChatGPT and Claude. I customized the preferences on both AIs to get the most out of their prompts and then pulled the trigger on this competition by telling ChatGPT, imagine you're a game developer using Unity 6 to make a short puzzle game for a game jam. A game dev competition which is usually done under a certain theme and a limited period of time. The game jam doesn't have any themes. The games will be judged based on a few factors, concept, innovativeness, implementation, and game design. Now, I want you to come up with the concept of the game, as if you are the designer, with more emphasis on the you. Explain the concept and how the game is gonna be played step by step, like you're talking to a 10 year old. On Robo, I also enable thinking to get the smartest answers. Welcome to Shadow Echoes. What kind of name is that? Remember this name for now. You control a little explorer who leaves behind a shadow echo that repeats everything you did. A bunch of dashes. Use those echoes to stand on switches, push boxes, and solve puzzles in a small 3D rooms. ChatGPT also gave me some headlights about how the programming and game design are gonna work, which is a cool thing. And then I went on ahead and copied the exact same prompts and pasted them into Claude. Welcome to Echo Chamber. Well, that's kind of sus. As far as these AIs have advanced these past couple of years, they still can't come up with good titles. You can check out my other video about that, but the previous competitors, ChatGPT and DeepSeek, came up with names that apparently everybody on the comments reported that they've gotten similar and sometimes even the exact same name suggestions from both AIs. Weird. The main idea of this very original game title is that you play as a little robot who can't see very well, but has an amazing superpower. He can bench 200 pounds. Uh, I mean, he can make sound waves that show you what's around you, just like how bats and dolphins navigate. And then he discussed a little about the game design, but nothing in terms of programming. But that seems to be because the fourth and smartest model of Claude seems to focus more on what's important right now than doing multiple things all at once. I guessed up the fuel on both projects, and after waiting for what felt like 20 GameCook upload schedules later, the projects were open. ChatGPT suggested we start with a B. Then I copied the player controller script it mentioned while Unity Cinemachine took care of the game's camera system. And I was kinda shocked to see that these work on first try. We can look around, we can move around, and we can jump. Meaning, we're already three steps ahead of Stephen Hawking. Now on to Claude. He suggested that we start off with a bean. But it suggested we make the bean longer. But it no longer looks like a bean. Looks more like my dick. And then it conveniently gave me the code for the player movement. Which I copied and pasted into the project with no guilt. And to my surprise, it didn't work on the first try. I can't jump and the player moves relative to the world axis instead of the camera axis. Luckily, it was fixed with one more prompt, but that already means that ChatGPT is one prompt ahead of Claude. But just when I thought ChatGPT was ahead, I realized that when I gave his bean a pair of red glasses, he started rotating around himself for some reason. I explained the issue to ChatGPT and he started tweaking, giving me random fixes that didn't work. While later, I realized all it took to fix it was to check one simple box. One click of a button that ChatGPT purposefully told us to avoid. 
So overall, the points of the first step, which was making a simple player navigation, comes down to this. They both created a beam, which is a pass on both sides. They both took two prompts to make the player work, with the exception that ChatGPT's player was drunk. So a little negative point to ChatGPT. It was time to build the pillars of puzzles, which are the mechanics, something that the player interacts with to create or aid with gameplay like moving platforms, opening doors, and etc. And hazards, a mechanic that can harm or kill the player but doesn't possess intelligence, like electric platforms, spike pits, etc. ChatGPT already mentioned a few of these, so I asked him to put these ideas into life. And now we have a door and a button. You can walk up onto the button to open the door. But the moment you walk up to reach for the door, the door starts going down. Then for the next mechanic, I gave ChatGPT another prompt and now we can see two boxes. One that is white and another that's black. You can push the box on top of the button to open the door and then proceed. But why is there a black box, I hear you ask. Well, you can't move the black one. You can't even collide with it. It is supposed to only be moved by the shadow that replicates your movement pattern. And ChatGPT made it so I could either choose to put multiple objects on the button for it to work or a set amount of weight. To be honest, I was surprised at how flexible and future-proof the system was. Two prompts, two mechanics for ChatGPT. Now before we get into Claude, let me explain that Claude's player movement system differs from ChatGPT's, meaning just creating a simple box with physics applied to it won't move if I try to push it because the player doesn't use physics either. But Claude kept that in mind and designed a system that worked, but kinda jank. He also created boxes that could be placed on a certain point as a bridge block. Then with another prompt, Claude was able to create a moving platform that didn't work. But thankfully with an extra prompt, it did. And Claude even went as far as to add options like choosing whether the platform moves when the player touches it or does it stop when the player jumps off? And that, my friends, is flexible and future-proof code, if you ask me. So the two AIs both made great mechanics for their games, and flexible ones at that. Although ChatGPT took two prompts and Claude took three, meaning with a total of 3.75 points, now the two AIs are at a tie? See, one secret that I kept from you guys is that ChatGPT's black box that could only work with the shadow didn't work in the first try, adding one more prompt to ChatGPT's arsenal. Meaning now ChatGPT with 3.75 points is still behind, but competing neck to neck with Claude that has a total of 4 points. It was time for the elephant in the room, the main mechanic of each game that ultimately is gonna shape the entire experience of the games pretty uniquely. I gave ChatGPT one prompt asking him to make the shadow system and I'm not gonna say it's too hard to make that, but it's also not an easy thing to do. Especially in this case, I would have to, at first, plan my code in my head and create a flowchart, then implement the system which certainly wouldn't work on the first try, or on the second one, or even on the third and fourth one. But with ChatGPT, we was able to pull the entire thing off in the first try. Although I will say that it requires a bit of polishing and testing, but it's still pretty impressive. With ChatGPT's excellent performance, I started to question whether Claude's coding ability was gonna match ChatGPT's at this point. Especially that Claude's game's mechanic requires some graphical work to be done as well. First, it took us two prompts to manipulate the robot's vision, which is dark as shit since he's almost blind. Then I asked Claude to make the sound wave mechanic, and he generated a code that never in my life would I be able to write such code myself. It used golden ratio and lots of math. 
only to not work when I tested it out. Seeing this, I proposed a different approach to the AI and he agreed, leaving us with a total of 4 prompts and the main mechanic almost fully working. But since this also included the graphics, I'm gonna be generous towards Claude and we'll count this as a 2 prompt 1 mechanic, which means now the two AIs are at a tie, both with a total of 5 points. Alright, it's time for the nightmare of the AIs. The number one thing that these artificial beings don't yet have the intelligence to handle. This is not only the most important part of the competition, but also one of the most important parts of any games. When it comes to level design, apart from teaching the player the mechanics while giving them a balanced challenge, there are many things that need to be considered. Verticality, lighting, open areas, tight areas, angles, and so on. And since I know how terrible these AIs are at level design, I told them all the things that they needed to keep in mind and press enter. ChatGPT using the fifth version and thinking enabled and with all the help that I gave him in my prompt, ended up making an absolute dog shit. Like what even is this? However, he did also give a side and top view of his level which didn't match and also were awful. So once again, I gave him another shot, but this time telling him to feel free to skip any of the principles that I mentioned, giving him more freedom. And this time he came up with a somewhat of a good first level. You have to walk upstairs and push a box down on top of the button to continue. At this point of the game, the shadow mechanic has not been introduced yet. I copied the first prompt I gave ChatGBT and pasted it onto Claude, and he came up with a good level design. However, as well as it looked on the paper, upon implementing the level into Unity, I noticed a bunch of issues. Literally, the first room that the player sees has a pushable box, which in Claude's terms, was supposed to teach them that things can be moved and pushed around. But there's no use for the pushable box here. Players are always going to feel frustrated, thinking they need to do something with the box, but they can never figure out what, since it has no use. The level does respect verticality and angles, but in Claude's design, you could very easily push a box to an edge and you wouldn't be able to push it in the opposite direction anymore since you couldn't get behind it. So I added these elevations to prevent that from happening. Anyway, the AIs added two more levels to the game. They could certainly go for more levels, but I couldn't. See, when I was designing the level, first of all, I was making levels that they were telling me to make, which felt like I had an actual job. Secondly, the level sucked ass causing me dizziness and headache just to fucking make them. And their creativeness at level design almost peaked with three levels. At the end of the day, ChatGPT took four prompts to make three levels, while Claude took three prompts to make the same amount. But ChatGPT's levels were much more fun and looked so much better. Stick around till the end to see what the levels look at the finalized stage. I'm giving ChatGPT 1.75 points while giving Claude only 1 point. It was time to work on the art and graphics, so I started off by asking how the player characters should look like. After some 3D modeling, I ended up with this for ChatGPT. It looks awful. Almost as awful as that dislike button. Make sure to like the video right now, gamer. So I decided to use this 3D model from the internet. Although I did end up making a somewhat okay robot character for Claude's game. Then I rigged the two characters up and gave them the necessary animations. And later inside Unity, I made the animator controller as well. Now it was time to see which one can read better from an image and generate the necessary code for them. I made two images explaining how these two basic animator controllers worked and then gave them to the corresponding AI. Claude took one prompt to make the animation system and it worked as intended. While on ChatGPT's side, there was one issue. 
which you can probably tell. Meaning ChatGPT is now one prompt behind Claude. But when it came to materials and color palettes, they both took a single command to make those work. And this is how the two games look like. Now I personally like that ChatGPT's games looks better, but I also respect Claude's work. So I'll leave you guys to decide for that in the comments, but the numbers say that Claude will get a full 1 point while ChatGPT will get 0.75 points. At the end, I shall say that Claude's concept for a game was just a tiny bit more innovative and original than ChatGPT's, so 0.25 points to him. But I asked a friend of mine to play through the game and he said he enjoyed ChatGPT's game more, while me, as a game developer, I enjoyed ChatGPT's game better when I was making it. So another 0.5 points to ChatGPT, making him the winner of today's competition. Keep in mind that this video does not conclude everything about the two AIs. I will still use them both and to be honest, I've had a better experience coding with Claude's assistance. But let me know what you guys thought of this. Who won and which AI do you personally think is better in the comment section down below. Now thanks for watching, make sure to like, subscribe and get out of here.